What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It is your host, Avery, here, and I apologize if I sound exhausted. I am so tired from working today, but I wanted to make this video for you guys talking about uh, Code of the Duelist because obviously there's a lot of hype around this set. Some people are talking about it. Some people aren't just because it's still a few months out. Me, personally, I'm very excited for this set just because I am going to actually be playing competitively again once this set comes out because I really don't feel like messing around with, you know, Zodiacs and Infernoids and just everything else going on in the meta, even though we got an emergency balance. I just don't feel like messing with it. So I wanted to make this video to talk to you guys today about should you invest in Code of the Duels. The reason why I'm making this video is because the crisis that was Maximum Crisis really turned a lot of people off. I feel personally from wanting to invest a lot of money into a main booster set. And by main booster set, I mean things such as uh, Duelist Alliance, Core Sets, um, Maximum Crisis, Code of the Duelist, not things like Dimensional Guardians or Hidden Arsenal. Those aren't considered core sets. You have your, I think it's like four core sets a year. So things like that is what people will normally invest in. Of course, then you have sets that are like Hidden Arsenal that have things like Necros, um, but that's a completely different um I guess, set in of itself. We're looking at core sets here, such as Code of the Duelist. So, for those of you who don't already know, if you don't follow my channel, if you're not subscribed, which you should, you should subscribe, be sure to hit that like button if you want to see more videos like this, and be sure to hit that notification bell, because if you're one of the first people to like my next video, I will give you a shout out. <laughs> so anyway, with that little plug-in out of the way, if you don't keep up on my channel, then you would not know that I'm actually going to be buying an entire case. For those of you who don't know, that is 12 boxes at about $60 a piece of Code of the Duelist because I want to be able to sell, sell, sell and make my money back. That will probably cost me around 650 to 700 US dollars and it is a big time investment and I have to be able to make sure that I am going to be able to at the very least break even on this set if I plan on doing this and plan on you know trying to make money off of this set. So back to the main point, should you invest in Code of the Duelist? Yes you should. Why? Number one, this is the first set that we are going to be starting off the Link Monster era with. Uh, there's going to be a lot of hype around this set, no matter if it's a common, if it's a rare, super rare, you name it. There is going to be hype around this set because these cards are going to be in a completely different era. Uh, there's going to be old cards that were made years ago that might actually see some play, such as Senate Switch. We might be able to see that in actual competitive play. It's just hard to tell at this point. But it's with something like this that you are able to potentially make a good amount of profit. Let's use an example. Let's take this card, Backup Secretary. In normal cases, people would see this card, oh, it's a common, it's probably trash, and keep in mind that this is the Japanese list, so some of these rarities will change, but for argument's sake, I'm just going to be using this, because the majority, if not all of these cards, are going to be coming over to the TCG once we get Code of the Duelist. So let's take Backup Secretary. If you control Cyber's Monster, you can special on this card from your hand, you only special on the Secretary once per turn this way. You kind of look at it at first and you're like, well, it's not all that good of a card. However, we are getting the Cyber Archetype in the Link Strike Starter deck. So maybe it has the potential to be good because you can be able to make an easy Link Summon with it. And on top of that, if it stays a common, then you can easily pick it up. Because people have never seen these kind of archetypes before because this is a completely different era people won't really know what to think usually so something like backup secretary instead of it being like let's say a quarter it might be 75 cents or a dollar it's not a big increase it's not you know going from a quarter to two dollars but it's an increase nonetheless moving on you have things like cyber's wizard which again is another cyber's card um it's going with the Cybers archetype. People are going to want to probably pick it up. Then of you have, of course, all of the Trickstar stuff. Whether you're playing a regular Trickstar deck or if you're playing the Trickstar OTK burn build, people are going to want this stuff. They may up the rarities because of it. People have been playing Trickstars in their Zodiacs over an OCG, so Lily Bell might be a super. Like Ochriskia might be a rare. We don't know. People are going to want these cards, and there's what one, two, three, plus the field spell is four, the trap is five, so we'll say like five cards, and that's not even including their uh, link monster, so we'll say six. 
So that's six cards right there in the set, plus the two I mentioned here, eight, or since we didn't even open up Wizard to see its effect on seven, that's seven cards there that people may want to be able to get. And you're going on through here, you got Hackworm, which was seen in the anime, people will want to pick that up. Cracking Dragon, people saw that in the anime, they might want to pick it up because of it. Um... And then also the Stargrail stuff. I was looking at the effects of the Stargrail monsters, and they're actually pretty damn good. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if they were at least like a tier like 2 or tier 1.5 deck coming right out of the gate. And who knows if we're going to be getting more support for this deck. So people that have been keeping up with this set that know that they want to play Stargrails or even another example, Trick Stars, are going to know for a fact that they'll want to pick this stuff up from the get-go. And that's already one, two, three, four, five, six, and I think I saw some other ones, so we'll just say eight uh, for argument's sake. That's another eight cards right there that people will want to pick up that you could potentially make profit off of. And then, of course, we have the new Twilight Sworn stuff that people are going to want to get. You've got the Punishment Dragon that people are going to want. Rescue Ferret is another amazing card that people are going to want. In case you don't know what this does, uh, it, of course, adds on to the rescue, uh, I guess, archetype, uh, in air quotes. But what it does is you can shuffle this card in control of the deck. You special summon any number of monsters from your deck whose total levels equal exactly six, except Ferret, to your zones that a link monster or monsters points to, but they have their effects negated. Also, they are destroyed during the end phase. You can only use the effect of Ferret once per turn. Every time, well, majority of the time that we've gotten a card that has said rescue something, it's been a secret, excluding Rescue Cat, because that was a common, but then later it was made into a super and all that fun stuff. But, like, Rescue Rabbit was a secret, and that was an amazing card. People have already been talking about how Rescue Fair is an amazing card, so I can guarantee you this card is either going to be, like, an ultra or a secret. It's not going to be an easy card to pick up in the slightest. People are definitely going to want this card. So that, once again, adds on to our repertoire of cards that people will want to pick up from us if we're, you know, buying a box or a case or whatever. Mauled Captain is an okay card. It's a rare in Japan, so it might be a super here. So it might be a $1 to $2, maybe $3 card. It just all depends, but it's another card that we can potentially add on to our list. And the list just goes on and on. You kind of get where I'm going. Firewall Dragon, Trickstar Holy Angel, Topologic, Mo Topologic Bomber Dragon. These are cards that people are definitely going to want, especially Firewall Dragon because it's busted. Um, you got the other Star Grail stuff here. You get the Mrs. Radiant, which is really good. Light Stage is very good. Smile Universe for those cheesy OTKs. Star Relic Aegis, Twilight Twin Dragons, which is um, an interesting card for uh, Judgment Dragon and Punishment Dragon. And then you got another Spellbook card here. You've got interesting cards such as Boogie Trap and uh, Defense Zone that people may want to pick up as well. Now, these cards are, uh, I believe, commons and rares, respectively. See, Defense Zone is a rare, and Boogie Trap is a rare, in the in Japan, mind you. Uh, but these are cards that people may want to pick up and test around with, so that is, once again, something else that you can be able to, you know, put in your trade binder or put on a list of cards that you'll be able to sell off and make profit off of. For those of you who don't know, what Boogie Trap does is that you can discard two cards, target a trap card in your graveyard, set that target, that set card can be activated during this turn. So, let's say, for example, you're playing Chamber, right? Degenerate deck. You activate Secret Barrel, you burn them for, say, 1,400, they're down to 1,400, you activate Boogie Trap, pitch two cards, get back the Secret Barrel, activate it again, you're able to kill your opponent for game. Or, let's say you have, like, three Reckless Greed set. You activate all three, draw six cards, activate Boogie Trap, ditch two, activate Reckless Greed, draw another two cards. You're deck thinning more, and you're able to get two cards that you may want more than the other two that you just pitched. Or if you're playing Zombies, use Boogie Trap, ditch a Mizuki and a Plague Spreader or a Shunrai Solitaire, whatever, and boom, you have a trap card right back to where you can be able to use it. So, an interesting card. Um, defense zone, it's a field spell. While a player controls a monster, monsters in their main monster zone, cards in that player's spell and trap zone that are in the same column as those monsters cannot be shown by the opponent's card effects. Also, their opponent cannot target cards with those card effects. A lot of mumbo jumbo, <laughs> but basically, it once again kind of adds on to the fact that it's one of those more interesting cards that people may want to pick up just to kind of see what it does. And that's especially, I guess you could say that's the point that I really want to drive home overall with this set is the fat heavy dust storm is another card just throwing that out there um 
in Recall, which I'll get to in a second. But this set, like I said before at the beginning of this video, it's the first set in the Link Summoning era. So people may want to pick up cards and kind of just hold on to them and bind their time to see if they go up or down as the time in this era goes on. You know, look at Star Strike Blast, perfect example. It came out a long ass time ago. Not a lot of the cards were really worth anything. And then you look at Vanity's Emptiness from that set, it was like a $25 card. Skullmeister is always like 15 to 30, it seems. You know, it's it's one of those it was one of those sets that quite honestly was probably a great investment for people who bought like cases and stuff and just made profit. Um, they had to really buy their time, but I'm sure they ended up making profit in the long run. And that's kind of what you have to focus on with Code of the Duelist. I'm not saying it's going to be a Star Strike Blast set by any means. It's going to be a much better set. I think that this is going to be a overall very great set. I mean, you saw how many cards I named off that people may want to get, and that's not even naming, you know, the other few that I haven't even gone over that people may want to get. Um, but at the end of the day, what you need to do for yourself if you want to invest in a case, or whether it's a box, or two boxes, half a case, whatever, look at the cards in the set look at the very least what japan has and look at what japan is playing you can really get a feel for their meta and kind of see how much of an impact code of the duelist is making um like i mentioned people are playing trick stars in their zodiacs granted they don't have dragon or barrage but it's still something that could translate over here to the tcg but other than that let me know what you guys think about this set. Do you guys think it's going to be a good set? Do you think it's going to be a bad set? Also, before I close out this video, I just want to show this off real quick. This is another card that I feel like is really going to fly out of this set. It's called Recall, and what it does is when your opponent activates a monster effect, your opponent draws a card. Also negate the monster's effect activation if you do destroy it. It's basically a better version of Divine Wrath because you don't have to discard a card. It's a Divine Wrath but in Dark Bribe form. And to me, I think that's just strictly better than Divine Wrath. But let me know what you guys think. I'm definitely going to be buying a case of this set. And uh, I'm going to be uh, selling, selling, selling and making my money. And uh, I'm feeling very confident about this set. It's definitely not going to be another Maximum Crisis set. Uh, if you guys happen to discuss this on your channel, please revert them back to this video. I'm really trying very hard to... Uh, grow my channel and grow my brand so if you guys happen to talk about this or say that you saw a video if it was this video i'd really appreciate it if you revert people back to this video anyway thank you guys for watching as always and subscribe if you've not already